So I decided to change tactics a little bit on my uh, how I'm going to drill these things out. I have a tiny, tiny carving bit on here on my Dremel tool, and I'm going to go at it on this one. So I'm not going to film. Well, I'll go ahead and try to show you guys and film it, but um, there may be some problems because I have to use my magnifying glass to make sure I know what I'm doing. Okay. And of course, it doesn't want to stay open and that has to be rectified right now because it's going to be kind of hard to see if I can't see good thing call modelers we have a ton of tape laying around for all kinds of different occasions just like that there we go now very very low setting Okay. It is not in there tight enough or square, one or the other, because it's rotating around a lot. Don't worry, I'll edit some of this out. I'm trying to balance this thing in there, right? Okay, now I see why it wasn't balanced right, because it's not tight at all. That doesn't help it. Yeah. <sighs> 
seem as though the shaft is too small. Yes, stinking little son of a bitch. Okay. Okay. Turns out the shaft was way too small for what I was trying to use it for. So now I have a newer one. It's a little bit bigger, so I got to watch it a lot more. But it's a lot more stable, and it's not bouncing all over the place. That puts a nice little divot in the middle of it, which is kind of nice. Sort of what we're looking for. Now, of course, one of the things you got to worry about when you're using a Dremel tool with plastic is actually melting the plastic. You want it to cut the plastic and not melt it. God dang it. Or in this case, not destroy the plastic. There. You're not going to be able to see this, but there's actually little divots in there now, which is a lot better than what we had before. Um, I had already broken that one off before when I glued it to begin with. Uh, ah, shoot. Look, I'm getting it all dirty. Oh, no. I guess I'm starting to pre-weather this already. Okay. Get my little makeup brush out. See, so yeah, I see. I broke that one out. So that looked like it's probably going to be a little bit better doing it that way than the way that I did it to begin with. So I'm going to try to go ahead and do those, hook them up, put them in, um, and then show you what I have as a result. Okay. Okay, so after a little bit of finessing and all that kind of stuff, I got the lights threaded through. These are real easy. The holes are big enough and all that. Now I got to glue those in place. That's in place. The other thing was, is all these wires came in, so I wanted to start making sure I knew what these wires were. Okay, so uh, labeled them all. 
Okay, so I'm gonna glue these up. They're gonna to have to sit overnight, make sure that they're glued in place and all that. Um, and so I'll get back to you later on this. All right, so as you guys know, we went ahead and installed uh, the lights on this. And wanna go ahead and test this. So we got work light one. I have a three volt, volt battery here. Okay, so it doesn't work on that side. Good thing is you can just flip it over. You don't want to use anything more than a three volt battery. That's, come on. It's always hard to figure out what the way that this goes. There we go. So let's see if you guys can see that. Nope. Let's get the light off of that a little bit more. Okay, so light, no light, light, no light. Now, um, next one we're gonna do, again, three volt, red on top, black on the bottom. Come on, come on. There's our little beacon light. Okay. Now, I've gone through and tested this, and I found out a little bit of a problem that I had. Apparently, this one doesn't work. Okay, and this light here, which is that one, doesn't work. And we'll zoom in and show you that in a minute. And then finally, we've got this light over here right so red goes on top green on the bottom and then that one whoops sorry there we go there it is and then that light works now this light which is going to be really really hard to see let's see if we can zoom in on that right there okay this light there actually is separated. It is broken right there. So that one's not gonna work unless I can try to resolder those two things. So three out of four lights work and I haven't put the red ones on the back. So I'm gonna have to send an email out to Evans Design and find out what I can do with the two that don't work at all. No, oh, sorry, keep losing this. Why? Oh, you know why? Because I went in too far. There we go. So, um, at least I got a couple of the lights working, and I'm gonna have to replace two. I'm gonna have to replace that one. Um, I also had a problem with the boom light that I wanted to put on, so I don't have that. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to get a replacement for that one. Um, and I haven't tried the two rear lights yet. So that's where I'm at with this. Again, it's another waiting game. This looks like it's going to be a long project. <laughs> I was hoping it would go faster than this, but it's not. Okay, so that's my update. Uh, again, I got the lights working. It looks like now I'm just going to have to wait for new lights to go in because I'm going to, there's a lot of wires that go around here. So I need to make sure that this all fits in there. All right, everybody, thanks for watching and uh, hope I can get through this soon. Okay, model railroaders, so you can see, had some problems. Three out of my four lights worked, um, which means I'm down two lights, so that means I have to get two more lights. So I'm not gonna go ahead and hook them up to the DCC until I get all the lights working so that I know that I hook them up to the right spot. So this is gonna be on hold for a little bit until I get my light situation figured out. So until then, thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe, thumbs up. Um, and make comments as you feel fit and all that kind of stuff. Been reading some of your guys' comments and all that kind of stuff. Thank you for the encouragement. And yes, this is a project that's becoming a lot more than I thought it was. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching.